Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Geber, Senior EDA Engineer at eFabulous Corporation. Today I would like to share with you all a deep dive into the Open Lane ASIC implementation infrastructure. It is worth noting, although that this webinar was held live, I re-recorded the audio as my connection was quite poor at the time. All questions have been moved to the end of the presentation. I guess the first question many of you might have is, what is Open Lane? Well, Open Lane is the world's most popular ASIC implementation flow with over 1,000 stars on GitHub and nearly 3,000 unique cloners a month. It is compatible with the open source Skywater and Global Foundries PDKs. OpenLane is free, both of, both of costs and of restrictions. That also means it's open source, so anybody is able to modify and extend it. Uniquely, OpenLane is batteries included. Thanks to our reliance on open source software, OpenLane bundles all of its dependencies into one Docker image that can be used on your Windows, Mac, or Linux-based machine. Finally, OpenLane is easily configurable, allowing you to configure the many parameters of the flow with just one file. So, as you can see here, OpenLane takes RTL descriptions of the circuit and JSON or Tickle configuration files from the user. Uh, both are fine, but we do recommend JSON at this point. Then runs a number of open source EDA tools in series to implement the circuit in ASIC. So you'll see here, we're going through Verilator, just for linting, then RTL synthesis with Yosis, placement and routing with OpenRoad, sign off with OpenSDA, Magic, KLayout, and NetGen. All of this happens without user intervention, and it produces files for use as macros or files sent to the foundries for manufacturing. So, now I suppose the question would be, what is OpenLane 2? Well, OpenLane 2 reimagines this OpenLane not just as a single flow, but as an infrastructure with which many flows can be created, yet still supporting the same simple configuration of OpenLane 1 by implementing a default flow named Classic, which emulates OpenLane 1 and does way, way more. It still supports both of the Sky130 and GF180 MCU PDKs, and it still bundles all of its dependencies, for which we provide multiple options, so either natively or using a package manager named Nix, containerized using Docker, or even in your web browser using Google Collaboratory, which I'm sure if you come from the machine learning or data science space, you are very familiar with. So, now I'd like to take you through a brief comparison of the open lanes. So, architect well, architecturally, they're fairly different. While OpenLane 1 was a configurable but ultimately monolithic flow, OpenLane 2 is a plugin-based infrastructure with which many flows can be made, including a flow very similar to that of OpenLane 1's. You will notice multiple plugin libraries, and this was core to the design of OpenLane 2, where you can implement plugins for tools that are currently not compatible with OpenLane, or tools whose licensing requirements would preclude their um, code being included in OpenLane source. An example for of that is that eFabulous we've at eFabulous we've developed and have been using a Synopsys plugin for some of our internal tapeouts. This architecture, in turn, improves on the traceability and replicability of OpenLane results. For OpenLane one, all steps are procedures with access to a global state, which they can modify as they see fit. This works when it's one monolithic flow, but if you say need to repeat floor planning with a different utilization value, you may encounter a crash due to a variable being set earlier than expected. OpenLane 2 encapsulates the state of the design as a first class object and forbids steps from modifying the configuration. The state is stored before and after every step in the OpenLane run directory so you can easily rewind or discard a misconfigured step or repeat a step with a different value. So I guess the question is, right now, which OpenLane should you use? Well, for most cases, if you're just submitting a simple careful user project that you expect to take from RTL to GDS2 with little intervention, we still do recommend OpenLane 1 at this stage. The reason is simple. OpenLane 2 has not been as thoroughly validated in Silicon as OpenLane 1. And out of an excess of caution, we cannot recommend it until then. However, if you have any other use case, or you need any custom flows that OpenLane 1 simply isn't able to provide, including, say, support for commercial EDA, we welcome you to use OpenLane 2. OpenLane 1 is currently no longer getting new features and is only getting critical bug fixes, and in the near future we intend to sunset OpenLane 1 entirely in favor of 2. So, using OpenLane 1. 
as any other use would be far better with open lane 2 with open lane 1 the only remaining relevant use is making designs as a careful user project you can follow this link for a tutorial we've previously hosted many webinars on designing for careful user project and so i will not be getting into that this webinar however this is the more interesting part which is for all other purposes using open lane 2 so installing open lane 2 well it's simple for Windows, Mac, and Linux by following this link. It guides you through installing the package manager, open lane, and running a test design. We do require the Windows subsystem for Linux to be used at this stage. We apologize for the inconvenience. The reason we primarily recommend Nix installation is, in short, better integration with your file system and better performance on Mac OS. While Docker runs natively on Linux, there is still a small penalty as the container and user file systems are not integrated, and on Mac OS, Linux is virtualized, incurring a non-trivial performance penalty. Here are the instructions to enter the OpenLane 2 environment. You clone OpenLane, invoke Nix shell, and run the included serial parallel multiplier, or SPM, example with the default flow. The run results will be in a folder under your home folder slash SPM slash runs then post fixed with the current timestamp, which you'll see an example of on the right here. Now the run directory, like OpenLane 1, OpenLane 2 creates a directory for every run. The run directory is composed of a number of step directories, each prefixed with an index, unlike OpenLane 1. So each step directory has all the files that may be created by a specific step, you know, output files, reports, etc. In addition to a config.json file, which has the configuration, but just filtered so it only has the variables that are relevant to the step, and the state objects, which capture the various views of the design before and after executing this step. There's also a directory named final, which contains copies of the final views of every type. To help you make use of its features, OpenLane 2 offers a very powerful command line interface. You'll find, a sampling, he, you'll find here a sampling of options that OpenLane 2 provides. 2, for example, doesn't run any steps after a step with that specific ID. From, on the other hand, doesn't run any steps before the step with that ID. Only doesn't run any steps that do not match the step ID, while skip does the inverse. Finally, run tag specifies the name of, of the run directory under runs which, if you leave blank, will just create a new directory with the current timestamp, but if not, it will actually load the previous run. This is complemented by with initial state, which allows you to explicitly specify the initial state. If you do not specify an initial state, the latest state in the current run directory is used, which, if the current run directory is empty, it just creates an empty state. Here are some example commands taking advantage of this. This runs the flow in two parts, a common part, then the second part twice, once with a higher floor plan utilization value and once with a lower one, without repeating all the steps before floor planning. This saves the time of having to rerun those parts of the flow independently. Now I'm going to show you how to use OpenLane 2 with Nix on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So here I have a typical just Windows installation with the Windows subsystem for Linux. I just open Ubuntu here from the start menu, and then I'm going to start by installing OpenLane. So um, now I already have OpenLane 2, so I'm just going to remove it real quick and then clone it again. Uh, this footage is sped up, by the way. So then I'm going to type nix shell openlane2 slash shell.nix. We're just going to give it a second. And then it's, it says it's going to fetch some paths. That's fine. And then you'll drop into the uh, green next shell. I'm just going to clear real quick. Now I'm going to run the SPM example. Now it's I already have a folder called SPM, so it's going to fail. So I'm just going to you know remove that real quick. And then I am going to try again. There we go. And then you now you see it's taking us through the whole flow. Just any moment now. So yeah, once again, this footage is sped up, but we just placed and routed that whole circuit in under a minute. 
So um, now you'll see here a number of folders that included the examples, such as runs, source, and verify, but we're mostly interested in runs right now. Now, let me show you the synthesis exploration. So we start with openlane.slash.config.json, and then we add dash dash flow synthesis exploration. Now what this will do is that it will try a number of synthesis strategies at the same time, and then show us the best results. And here we see that the best results are for areas 0, 1, and 2. I highlighted that by accident. I apologize. So they all have the same where slack, which is 5.32. Let's presume I just want to use area 1. So I'm just going to open Vim here. And then under the basic section, I'm going to create synth strategy and set it to area 1. I'm going to fix that quote. And then I'm going to save and exit. Next, I'd like to show you the example of running the floor planning with multiple utilizations and comparing the results. So here I am just going to run up until SCA pre PNR, which is the step immediately preceding floor planning. And yeah, so you'll see here I, it skipped every step up until floor plan in it. Now, this next part is a bit complex, but essentially we need to get the last state in the common run. It's going to be inside folder 11 because that's the biggest number. And then we find state in.json and state out.json. So we're going to just try to get this path for straight out here. Okay, so we're just going to copy this. Then pop up twice. And then uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to type this with initial state and then paste the path and then type state out. Then I'm going to say from open road off floor plan and then run tag low util. And then I'm going to use a new flag called dash C to set the utilization to 30%. And then I'm going to run the flow, well, the part of the flow, everything starting from floor plan with the 30% utilization. Great. Now I'm going to want to preview that in Kayleyout, so I'm going to type dash dash flow open in Kayleyout, so that's one of our the included flows, and type low util. So yeah, you'll see here we have a layout, and if I measure it, it's about 105 in length. So that's neat. Now we're going to try with 70, so I'm going to change the run tag to high util and run the flow again. Well, part of the flow again. And yeah, I'm going to open that in Kaleyout as well. And sure enough, when I measure it now, it's around 68, which, you know, reflects the higher utilization value. So yeah, you can imagine all the kinds of variables you can use this with and just how powerful it is. In fact, our PNR engineers use this extensively. Right, now let's move on to creating custom flows. Well, the default flow for OpenLane 2 is called Classic, which emulates OpenLane 1 as compatible with all the configuration files from OpenLane 1. Uh, as we've mentioned though, you can rewind, skip around, and run parts of the flow. But OpenLane is actually capable of much more than that. So, Writing custom flows. Well, there are two ways of creating custom flows, declaratively and programmatically. Declarative flows are sequential flows that are declared within your config.json or config or Python configurations, while programmatic flows are written in Python and are completely customizable, and can even have nonlinear or pa even parallel execution paths. You can declare a se custom sequential flow for your design right in your config. So here's an example of a declarative flow for an inverter. We've trimmed the flow down from 70 plus steps into 18 steps, as a lot of steps are not required for such a simple design. And coming in version 2.1, you'll also be able to create derivatives of existing flows right in the configuration. So, for example, this one here on the right 
removes all the mid PLR SCA steps as they are not essential and only used for traceability, but can take a lot of time on larger designs. So now I'm going to show you how to write some custom flows in Python. So writing custom flows requires expert understanding of the Python programming language, and we have a lot of documentation on it, but for now I'd just like to show you you know, a sampler of how custom flows work in the OpenLink collaboratory. So you'll see here we're just installing Nix in the PDK, writing files, and then you'll see we're starting what's known as an interactive configuration. Now here we can import a step, we can view its help. So we're importing yosis.synthesis here, which is the name of the ID of the synthesis step, which you can get from the documentation. Then we're running it, and then and then we're going to run the synthesis in the code that I'm going to show you right now. I just need to scroll for a bit. There we go. So you'll see here that uh, we have um, synthesis equals to synthesis. We pass Verilog files and we give it an empty state and gen then just call synthesis.start. So pretty neat. Next, you'll see um, there is floor planning, which you can do with step.factory.get open row floor plan. You pass the synth the state out from the synthesis and then you can see the floor plan and it is visualized for you. Then same thing for tab decap insertion, IO placement, whatnot, and you'll see, you know, it's fairly simple. Always the state in of a step is the state out of the previous step. And uh, yeah, so you can easily imagine how this scales. You, you can run those in parallel. You can run them in any order you desire. It's your flow. And that's the power of OpenLink too. So to conclude, we've introduced both versions of OpenLane, which are the battle-tested rock-solid OpenLane 1 for careful user project, and the new flexible OpenLane 2 for education and complex chip integration. We've shown how to use OpenLane2 to both control the default classic flow effectively to try out multiple configuration variables at the same time and initialize and create custom flows. Here are some useful links, so the OpenLane2 repository, the documentation for OpenLane2, and a full tutorial on implementing the careful user project using OpenLane2. This is the Q&A segment. Once again, most of these questions were answered live in the webinar. However, I saw it fit to re-record my responses uh, as my audio was quite poor at the time. First thing is, a lot of people asked, does OpenLink 2 support tickle scripting or is it Python only? Why Python? And what about support for AI-assisted flows? Well, OpenLink 2 supports Python for two reasons. Number one, it is the world's most popular programming language. It, that, it, that is the simple truth. The second is integrates nicely with popular data analytics and machine learning libraries, which does allow for AI-assisted flows, as the third question asked. Performance is not a concern, as while the backbone is in Python, the tools that doing the most computationally intensive tasks, such as detailed routing and synthesis, are programmed in C++. Same for LVS and DRC. Can we do hierarchical approach for chip design using OpenLane? How does macro integration work in the OpenLane flows? Can we do bottom-up approach for chip design using OpenLane? And is it possible to embed an analog component in an OpenLane 1 flow? Yes, OpenLane supports bottom-up approaches to chip design centered around integrating macros. There is a section in OpenLane 2's documentation called Using Macros, which answers all of these questions and more. With respect to analog macros, they are no different, but you will need to make sure OpenRoad does not buffer the pins leading to the analog macros. What are, the, what are the tech nodes that these tools have been tested in? Would these work with FinFAT nodes? What is your plan for supporting proprietary PDKs and what about the Sky 90 nanometer process? OpenLane has been tested internally with some proprietary PDKs, but by their very nature we cannot share the configuration files. To port a PDK to OpenLane, you need to implement two classes for variables, universal PDK variables and all the PDK variables for the steps you want to use in your flow. These variables can be found in the OpenLane 2 documentation. With respect to FinFET nodes, they have not been tested with OpenLane, but Yosis, OpenRoad, and Kaleout have all been used on processes of these at this scale, and we have confirmed tapeouts. But the flow itself has not been run through a FinFET uh, 
node. We have nothing to announce with respect to Sky90 at this time. Is OpenLane 2 compatible with System Verilog? System Verilog support on OL2. Does OpenLane work on VHDL? OpenLane 2 includes an experimental System Verilog parser as part of the default flow to which you'll need to set the variable use underscore synlig to 1. However, it is less battle tested than the OSIS frontend, so please use it at your own risk. On Linux only, OpenLane does support VHDL, however, you will need to use a slightly different flow named VHDL Classic with no space. You can specify that via the dash dash flow command line argument. Do you plan to add LEC capability? Will you be adding DFT through fault? We already have Yosis's Equi utility installed with OpenLane 2, but you will be required to provide your own Equi script as they are quite difficult to automate. We have nothing to announce with regards to DFT and fault at this time, but it is on our radar. Can we add custom strategies in the synthesis flow? Can one also feed different top-level parameters in order to run different, synth different synthesis runs in parallel? For the first question, you'd have to write custom steps to do that, as we do not support custom strategies within the step itself, although we'd welcome an enhancement request on GitHub for that. With respect to parallelism, you'd have to write your own flow similar to synthesis exploration to accomplish that. Uh, the code is available on OpenLane 2's GitHub repository. How can you write your own plugins for proprietary tools? Is there documented guidance? We're working on documentation for that, which should be at least partially available starting 2.1.0. Are all these command line options documented somewhere, and what was the command used to apply synthesis variations? Uh, you're free to rewind the video, but yeah, everything is in the open link to documentation, and the command is simply adding dash dash flow synthesis exploration without a space between synthesis and exploration. How would you approach hold violations in routing final steps? Is there an add buffer option or end variable that can be set to fix hold violations? We have a great time enclosure document by our EDA slash IC design lead, Dr. Shalon, in the open lane 2 documentation under achieving time enclosure. With respect to buffer ECOs, we do not have that feature at the moment and we welcome enhancement requests on our GitHub issues. Is it possible to substitute the PDK standard cells with our own? As long as you do not violate DRC rules, sure, but we cannot guarantee the functionality of customer and cells. We generally do not recommend that. Can I have OpenLane 1 plus 2 installed, and can I use OpenLane to debug and then use the same parameters in OpenLane 1? Yes, the two are independent, and no, we make no such guarantees. While OpenLane 2 supports OpenLane 1 configurations, the outputs may be slightly different due to heuristics used in the various utilities. If they were identical, we'd ask people to move to OpenLane 2 immediately without waiting for silicon validation, as we would not we would be exactly as confident in OpenLane 2 as we are in 1. But alas, the outputs are not identical. Can we now use OpenLane 2 for Caraval? Uh, what chip Ignite tape out is OpenLane 2 anticipated to be acceptable slash recommended for? We will announce when OpenLane 2 is the primary recommended flow for shuttle soon. Uh, I'm assuming this will be covered eventually, but where and how is the target technology node specified and what is the default? It is Sky130, but you can customize it with the dash dash PDK command line flag. And yes, we do include GF180 MCU in our continuous integration process. So I can use int interactive mode in open lane 2 and not in open lane. Open lane is automated from synthesis to GDS, is my understanding correct? Uh, open lane 1 does support an interactive mode, but it is highly unstable due to the global state modification we discussed earlier. Open lane 2 was designed with an interactive mode in mind, so it performs way better in interactive mode. Ultimately, you can use both for either, but we no longer recommend open lane 1 for interactive or iterative workflows. Will OpenLane 2 automatically use past runs that haven't changed? Yes, but not for new runs. For resuming old runs, the old folder can be used. Uh, then do each of the states you are generating here get saved somewhere? If so, can we tag slash name them? They're all saved in the step directories, as mentioned previously, but there is no option to name them. You will have to point to them via file paths. Does OpenLane have any memory compilers, and can we do timing analysis interactively? 
no to both. Feel free to file enhancement requests in the open link to repo. That's it. Thank you all. Sorry the recording took so long. Uh, free, feel free to join the open source Silicon Slack if you have any further questions. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank <music> you.